Let's just jump right in. I want, I want to get into this. Last week, we read this verse of Scripture out of 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm just going to do a little review from last week just to bring you up to snuff here and then, and then talk about a, a, a few other things. But the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I made the comment last week that communion is fellowship. And I, and I made the point that you, you, you can't fellowship with this pulpit or the chair you're sitting in, you know? Uh, you, can't, you, can't have a, you can't have a relationship and have fellowship with the floor. You can't have relationship with something that has no life. And he said, he said, and the communion or the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with you all. We can have communion and connection and fellowship with the person of the Holy Spirit because He's alive. Can you say amen to that? You know, people say this a lot, where they, uh, I have people all the time because I position myself around people, certain groups of people that need what I have. And, and yet, you don't give them what you have, I'm talking about of the things of God, you, you, you have to learn not to give people the things of God until they're ready to receive. Yeah. But you have it. But then when they ask you the question, they say, well, you know, what's that Holy Spirit thing? If I've been asked that once, I don't know how many times I've been asked, what, what about that Holy Spirit thing? Well, they don't know Him to call Him a thing, Right? And, and, and many people are in that place, and you don't want to be one of those today where we are right now, where the Holy Spirit is just something or some whatever, and you don't know anything about Him. That's why we're teaching on it. He's the one that you and I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. He's here to help you every day through any situation that you face. I don't care what it is. He is the helper. Can you say amen? <clears throat> I'm training myself. Every day, you need to be doing the same thing. I'm training myself every day to depend on Him more and more all the time and not on how things look, not depend on other people. See, the tendency in our society is to depend on people. Where God's leading you is where you depend on nobody so that other people can depend on you. You understand? You know, it sounds like I'm saying one thing, and negating something else, I'm not. You, you need to be dependable where people can depend on you as they're learning to grow and depend on Him. Right. Can you say amen? People need that. Oh, desperately people need it. I don't care if they've been born again two days or 25 years. If they don't know how to trust God, then they're going to come to you. You need to be there, but you need to learn how to help them to trust Him. Can you say amen? See, so He's the one we deal with, and with in my life, I'm working every day to depend on Him more than I depend on anything or anyone else. Yeah. At, at the age that I've lived on the planet to this point, um, you know, sometimes you have to say things and use examples and maybe people think you're talking about them or whatever and I'm not thinking about anybody. I'm just saying, I just see this. That when people have lived... A lot of people have lived longer than I have, but when people have lived about, about around my age, you know, maybe in their mid-50s and then to 60s and those kind of things and then beyond, uh, the tendency is to kind of get lazy and kind of just whatever and just kind of let things kind of go and slide and you kind of just let other people do it or let, you know, a, a lot of times I see that, that, that men just kind of let their, their spouse do whatever. You know, and they just depend on them and put so much, so much responsibility on their lives. When you, 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 we, you, as, a, as a husband and wife, you need to be able to trust each other. You, you understand what I'm saying? We, we don't want to get lazy and depend on anybody. We want to trust God. And in the later years, you want to trust Him more than you ever did ever before. But we got to learn it every day right now. And if we don't, we can't handle whatever's out there. And there's stuff. 
Bible doesn't say that, you know, I'm praying for a world that, where there's no issues. You're praying the wrong thing. You've got to be praying and focusing on things in yourself and then how to help other people. That's our, we, we are all ministers of reconciliation, reconciling people in their thinking from the world's way of thinking to God's way of thinking. That's your job. That's your anointing. That's your responsibility on the earth. And we've got to fulfill that. Can you say amen? Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, and I'm just saying that power that's working in us is me yielding to the Holy Spirit in me. I'm going to say this again. You've heard me say this many times. I'm going to say it again tonight after I say it right now. But the one in you knows everything about everything. And He lives inside of you. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit is in you. If you're truly born again, then the Holy Spirit resides on the inside of you, and He'll never leave you or forsake you to the ends of the earth if you're truly born again. And if He's on the inside of me, then the one that knows everything about everything is inside of me, willing to give me everything I need to know. He is the helper. Can you say amen? I said this last week, I say it again. One of the most important things that you can confess every day is this. I hear his voice. I do what he says. What's the rest of it? I worry about nothing. Somebody's been listening. Right. Hear his voice. I do what he says and I worry about nothing. You will never come to a place where there's no worries in your life if you're not hearing his voice and then doing what he says. That's where it comes from. But it's good to hear yourself say that every day. I want, I said this last week, and then I want to read 1 Corinthians 12 or a few verses in there again, looking at these manifestations of the Spirit. I said this last week that I, I, when, when God thinks about me, that song, when I think about the Lord, how He healed me. I want God to be singing in heaven. Man, when I think about bird... I'm not frustrated. I'm not thinking I've told him 30 times to do something and he's not doing it. When he thinks about me, I want him to think somebody that he can depend on. Can you say amen? You know, we're not talking about perfection. We're talking about getting better at what we do. And the only way you'll ever get better is if him inside of you is making the difference in your life on a day-to-day basis because you're choosing to do it His way and not your way. Plain and simple. So in 1 Corinthians 12, we read this last week. I'm going to review just a little of it and then get into the rest of what I wanted to say tonight. Talking about the manifestations of the Spirit. And I'm going to take the rest of my time to really break this down, and I want you to hear some of the things that I feel like God's given me to give to you about the manifestations of the Spirit. Now, if you've been in the church world for very long, these were always talked about as gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 1, there's nine what they what the Scripture calls gifts, but in the literal, if you look in a King James Version or New King James Version, the, gift, the word gift is in italics, and that means it was added by the translators. It wasn't in the original, the word gifts. And what he's talking about here, because he uses the word, and, and, and when you look in a, because in a, a, it was translated into Greek, and when you look at the translation in a Greek lexicon Bible, it is the manifestations. So that's what he's talking about here. So he says, now concerning spiritual, I'm going to say manifestations, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. And then down in verse 4 he says, uh, there are diversities of manifestations, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, the way that they, way it gets out, how God uses people in different ways, but the, uh, but same, the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, 
But it's the same God who works all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And he goes on to to name these nine manifestations, and at the end of it he says, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing each one individually as He wills. Over your lifetime, you should operate in all nine of these manifestations if you understand them. They're, they're, they're not bigger. They're, they're not, it's, it's not that difficult. It's, it's at times people have tried to make these things happen when you don't have to make them because there is He wills them. Now, tonight, what I want to finish up on is we talked about the discerning of spirits last week. And the discerning of spirits and the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge are revelation gifts. They reveal something. All three of those. And when I say gifts, again, I'm correcting myself, these manifestations. They are the word of wisdom is a manifestation. A word of knowledge is a manifestation. Discerning of spirits is a manifestation. And then I'm adding one to it that's not one of the nine, but it is the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in other tongues. Because when you pray in the Spirit, then you pray with the understanding. In other words, you begin to pray in the Spirit, revelation begins to come. We're not going to talk about that one this week. We'll talk about it next week. But I'm adding that to a, as, as being a revelation gift, something that is revealed to you. Okay? So... Just follow with me and kind of listen to some of the, the, the notes and things that I have written down tonight that I want to say to you about this. Um, <clears throat> one, one thing that you can't do in understanding these is you can't look at these from the viewpoint of the spectacular. You have to see that these are supernatural. And everything supernatural is not necessarily spectacular. Everybody hear me say that? The other thing about these these manifestations is that there's, there's two sides to every one of them. And there's the spiritual side of this, and then there's the physical side of this. Now, I want, to, I want to show you that revealed in a verse of Scripture in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. This is on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God came upon people. And uh, in that day, they had, they had tarried for this. They had done exactly what God told them to do. And in, and in the fourth verse, I just want to read it. It says, and they were all, Holy Spirit came down, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the spiritual side of it. And began to speak in other tongues. Who did? The Holy Spirit did? No, they spoke in other tongues. So, they had to allow their tongue to form words that were given to them because it says, as the Spirit gave them utterance. But it doesn't say here they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit began to pray in other tongues or speak in other tongues. They begin to speak. So with any manifestation of the Spirit, there's two sides to it. There's the spiritual side of it that comes from the Holy Spirit, and then there's the physical side where you and I have to yield to and participate with the Holy Spirit so that it will work. If, if, I'm, if I've got something that comes up, if something is coming to my mind and I'm not sure about what to do with it, I'm so grateful that I can pray in other tongues. But if I don't do it, no understanding will come, and yet the one that knows everything about everything has what I need, but I have to do the physical part of purposing to pray in other tongues because I've been prayed for to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The evidence came, 
He gave me the utterance. The evidence came. I began to pray in other tongues, and I've been developing it for the last 40 years, 42 years. I've been working on that and developing it, and I have a language that I can pray at will. Right now, standing here looking at you with my eyes open, I can pray in other tongues. So when I pray in other tongues, what I'm doing is taking, I'm taking the spiritual that I have on the inside of me, and I'm now putting it to work, and then He brings the understanding. Right here, Holy Spirit came down as He promised, came on and filled all that were there in that, in that upper room, and they had to purpose to begin to pray in other tongues. God didn't take over their tongues. God didn't, God, God didn't put the words in their mouth. He gave them the utterance or the ability to speak it forth. Yeah, that's right. Two sides to what we're talking about, about allowing the manifestations of the Spirit to work in our lives. So, I want to give you some personal examples of what I feel like that looks like. Now, at the end of this message, right before we end, I'm going to ask somebody, so I want you to be thinking about it. I want something very quick and to the point, but if you've ever operated, you know that you've had a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge about something at a specific time that God has given you. I want you to share that. You're going to come up here. I've got a microphone right there. You're going to stand right here. Just real quickly, I just want to know what it was, give the illustration, and be done with it. Okay? But I, I, want some, I want you to be thinking about, have you had that, and is it right for you to share? Don't share something that too personally you can't share or whatever. But if there's something you can share as an example to the people that you've operated in that, it's good that people hear from you. But let me give you some examples of how this operates with me, because I want to break this down to, so that we realize that these are so accessible for our lives. Okay? So, my example, my first example, is when I preach. Um, as I'm preaching today, I'm doing the preaching, right? Holy Spirit is not, the Holy Spirit is not doing, he, Holy Spirit didn't do the study and the preparation to get here. The Holy Spirit didn't do it. But He helped me. Okay, so I want you to watch this. Um, in my preaching, I am looking for supernatural manifestations to happen in my preaching. Um, last Wednesday night, actually it's, it was twice that week, last week at, at Dan and Sandy's granddaughter's funeral that we did, that I was honored to and privileged to do in that service, when I was preparing for that, God gave me a word of knowledge. I'm going to give you definition. I want to tell you what it was. I said it last week in the service here, but I'm going to say it again because, because what something like this is, is something that I'll get when I'm studying to preach the word but the Holy Spirit reveals to me. Okay? Now, I'm not going to say what it was, or you, some of you remember what I said, but, but, I, but I want you to hear a couple other things before I, I give that. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> um, but but when, when a word of knowledge comes, a word of knowledge, and, and, and this this is a word of knowledge about a word of knowledge. Okay, watch this. A word of knowledge is not learned, it's revealed. The manifestation of the word of knowledge, it's not, it's not knowledge that's learned, it's knowledge that is revealed. Now, that's a word of knowledge. Because you may know that, but God gave that to me. And, and when He gave it to me, He showed me that that will mean something to people. 
when they understand these manifestations. It'll mean something more to them. It's not something that is the result of the knowledge that you have. It's something that the Holy Spirit reveals to you, a word of knowledge. Now, when something is revealed to you, It has to be revealed from what you've done with the Word. So, you had to study, you had to confess, you had to develop yourself. You have to learn how to yield to the person of the Holy Spirit. And as you do that, what you do is you put yourself in a place because you're able to understand the things of God. He will bring a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom about something into your life and what it does, it's like I said, it's not knowledge that you've learned, okay, that you're getting from God. It's what He's revealing. But it's a result of the work that you've put into positioning yourself to be able to receive from God. And what it does is it takes your understanding about the Word to another level, and then that revelation that came to you, like I just gave you right there, a word of knowledge is not learned, it's revealed. Knowledge is learned. And you can grow in faith and revelation and understanding of the Word on a day-to-day basis. But notice, it didn't say the book of knowledge. It didn't say the gift of knowledge. It's the manifestation of a word of knowledge. It's like a, like a fragment of a sentence. It's not even a paragraph of, uh, of knowledge. It's a word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is not learned, it's revealed. When you see the word of knowledge like that, then you can begin to see where God has revealed things to you along the way, and sometimes we miss Him because we don't realize what He's trying to get over to us. If you believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, and that after three days, he was dead, wrapped, no life in that body for three days, and on the third day, he was raised from the dead. If you believe that, you can believe anything. That's a word of knowledge because it's something that's present. That's a word of knowledge about information that, that most of you, you, you know that's true, you know he came from a version, you know that. But the way I worded that, the way I heard that from God and the way I delivered that and gave that, that becomes a word of knowledge that takes your information to another level and then it begins to give you and reveal things to you where you de- begin to develop understanding and information on a whole nother level than you had before you got that word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. It's amazing the way that it works. It's actually supernatural, many times not spectacular, but you can know. You, you'll be sitting, you'll hear a word preached, and all of a sudden there's something that was said that just did something. That was a word of knowledge to you. Sometimes you, you, Dale could get a word of knowledge and Joey doesn't. Why? Because it's where we're at. God knows what we need. Then the message can go farther and all of a sudden something comes and someone else gets a word of knowledge. And nobody else got that. Or maybe half the room got, wow, like for the first time they saw something. It it was a word of knowledge that came to them. Now, you say, well, you know, I I don't, I'm I'm not called to preach or I'm not preaching or teaching or whatever, but, but yet... You need the two sides of the spiritual and natural in anything you do. Let's say you have a business and, and, and one day as you're just praying in the Spirit, the Lord tells you, I want you to buy this and it's going to create this. I don't know what it, what it would be. But just try to put yourself in that place in business. God will give you words of knowledge in the moment that will enhance business, future things, supernatural things that will happen 
that come just because of a word, just a word, do that. Remember, these manifestations are fragments. They're not, they're not even whole sentences. They're not paragraphs. They're not a whole book. They're they, you know, not some long, drawn-out prophetic word that's given to you or whatever that, that sometimes it takes weeks and months and, to understand. It's just something to the point and short. And it'll transform. And it'll take you to a new level when you learn to submit to that and receive it and embrace it. Can you say amen? So when I'm preaching the Word, when I'm studying to preach the Word, God will give me things that I need to say. And when He gives me things and and statements that I need to tell you, in in those words, many times, they're words of knowledge or words of wisdom. And I want, to, I want to define what that is, what a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge is before I read a couple of examples in the Scripture. <clears throat> um, a word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation of things known by God. No one else knows. Not the way God knows it. Remember, he, the one that knows everything about everything lives inside of you. And it's something that is present for right now, is a word of knowledge. A supernatural revelation of things known by God. But that word of knowledge will open up new understanding of knowledge that we've never known before. That's why it's so important that we're able to yield to these manifestations and allow them to work on our behalf. They're, they're not something that are beyond our understanding. They're for everybody. Everybody. And, and, and you should operate, be on the receiving end or the giving end, you know, or the, or, or the giving of words of knowledge or word of wisdom or, uh, and be used in all nine gifts of the Spirit throughout your born-again life on this planet. At least be open to be used by them. And how does that happen? When you develop in your life on a day-to-day basis a greater understanding of God's Word. That's why I said earlier, a word of knowledge is not knowledge that you learn. A word of knowledge is is a word, a fragment of a sentence, something that is revealed to you by the person of the Holy Spirit. So when, when I'm studying... When I'm studying the Word, and, and I, I, I study weeks and months out for series, I get those together. But that, I mean, that's good, and you need to study to show yourself approved. But at the end of the day, it's not what I put together that matters. It's what He reveals to me when I take that information. When it's time to preach that Word, then I've got to spend the time to hear from Him. I've got to spend the time to yield to Him to give and deliver the things that He wants delivered to people to everyone that's sitting here. It's not enough for you just to get something from me. You've got to get it from Him because it'll change your life forever. Can you say amen? Um, and, and, and another way that you have to see it is that words of knowledge, because that's what I'm talking about right now, and I'm just going to give you the definition of a word of wisdom. All the other things are pretty much the same except for when they're for. But... Words of knowledge along the way continue to be these nuggets that we receive from God. When the Holy Spirit is in in a constant mode of revealing to you because you're open to receive from Him, He'll give you these nuggets of things that are not just known in the natural realm. It's what's revealed to you. He wants to be in a... his, His job is to reveal. The Holy Spirit's job, He has a job, He has a purpose on the earth, and one of the main purposes is to reveal all truth to us. So that we're not just people walking around with a head full of knowledge, but we've got things that have been imparted to us by Him who's inside of us. He's the Spirit of truth. Can you say amen to that? Um, and, and, And I... I wrote a couple of pieces of a definition to the word yield. Um, when, when you're yielding to the Holy Spirit, you, you do what He says. When you're getting something 
above natural knowledge. Like you might be reading the Scripture and all of a sudden something you just like explodes on the inside of you. Well, if something like ignites on the inside of you, where is He? He's inside of you, right? The person of the Holy Spirit that's connected with your human spirit He's revealing things to you like that. So you're studying the Word, and all of a sudden, something happens, and and then you begin to dig out what He brought to you, that fragment of knowledge and information that's above and beyond just the natural knowledge that you have about something, but then it takes the knowledge that you already have, and it takes it to another level. That's what these words do. That's what these manifestations do. They take you to another place with God. I can't live without them. I've begun to realize more and more all the time how I, 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 I don't, I know what it's like to have time spent with God that's dry and time spent with God that is fulfilling. Where I'm receiving because, because it's not being selfish to receive. I'm receiving because I've got something to do with it. And I, I, don't, I don't want there to be some kind of a block or a hindrance. I want it flowing. I want that constant flow with God. And, and when there's that flow, I'm open and I'm yielding to do what He wants to reveal to me. And, and revelation doesn't come from here. Revelation comes internally. And you have to get what that looks like. Because when I say internally, when I say internally, it's not an audible voice that you're hearing. It's a knowing that happens on the inside of you. You just know that you know. But where does that come from? It comes from the time and the effort that you put into studying the Word, confessing the Word, declaring the Word, praying the Word, developing yourself, and learning how to pay attention when He's revealing to you. So the more time and attention that I pay to what He is trying to reveal to me, the more nuggets of words of knowledge and wisdom that come my way. And then you think about it. You might, you might be near somebody and you're standing next to somebody. I may be standing next to Tammy and all of a sudden God's saying, I want you to tell her this. You, you, you weren't thinking about that. You're not look, go, going around trying to find somebody to give a really good word to. No, you can't do that. It says He wills. You can't do that. I'm telling you now, you can't do that. You're not smart enough for that. But the more you develop this and the more you have of those nuggets on the inside, you come up against or, or, or near somebody and, and God says, I want you to just tell them that. Remember, you're just giving them a fragment. You might, just, you might say to them, you know, God just told me, or maybe it won't even be God just told me. You may, you may say to them, if they can't handle God just told me, you might just say, you know what? Have a great day. It's, it's going to all work out in your life. You ever said something that simple to somebody and they all, all of a sudden tears start coming down their face? Because that was a word of either knowledge or wisdom that they needed to hear. And God told you to give that to them. But if you're not developing that and learning how to yield to Him for your life on a day-to-day basis, and you're not getting those nuggets of the words of wisdom and word of knowledge in your life, then you don't have anything to give to other people. You're not in a position to be able to be trusted by God to give something in a way that you, that you think is right. See, our natural minds might think that, well, I need to give them a word and I need to convince them of this word, you know? And 25 minutes later, after like they're worn out and they're, laying, they're, they're trying to find a way to get out of the situation that you've held them captive in, you know, it's because you, you've never learned how to yield to what he said. It's just a fragment of something that will be a blessing to somebody, and then God builds on that. You don't want to be the one giving the Word, building on it, fixing everything, making everything right for their life. No, that's not your job. One does one thing, somebody else does something else. God brings the increase and causes things to really change and happen in people's lives. I just want to be used to be a part of that. And what I'm talking about tonight is key to that. Can you say amen? So, 
the definition of a word of wisdom, and then I want to read these two passages to you. A word of wisdom, everything else pretty much is the same, except a word of wisdom is revelation, things revealed, of the plan and future of God's knowledge for you. The plans and future of the knowledge you have for you. But it's all in the future. A word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. Now, there are tons of examples in Scripture. I'm giving you one of a word of knowledge and another of a word of wisdom just to prove my point. And then I want to hear from anybody if somebody has something they can offer in, in, in saying this actually, this is, what, this is how I've operated in that or it's worked in my life the same way. Okay? So in John 4 and verse 16, and this is the story of the woman, uh, the Samaritan woman um, at the well. And I'm just kind of jumping into right in the middle of the story in verse 16. And Jesus said to her, go and call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said. In other words, you're telling me the truth. I have no husband, or you're, you're, you've well said that I have no husband, for you've had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Uh, yeah, right? So you think, about, you think about this word right here, this is a word of knowledge of how it is right now. She spoke truly, but do you think she would have revealed the rest of that information? But he gave her a word of knowledge, actually, I feel like is an encouragement that she was truthful about her situation. She's not freaked out about the fact she's been married five times and living with a guy that she's not married with. You're not freaked out about it. But what he wants, what he wants is to her, for her to realize, yes, yeah, she spoke the truth, but now even more of the truth because what he was talking about was living water changing her life. But that, that word that he gave her right there was a word of the, right in the present. It was a word of knowledge that actually liberated that woman's life, totally set her free. Can you say amen? Luke 22 is a word of wisdom story. <clears throat> And I'm just going to jump into verse, to verse 8. <clears throat> and this is when, when Jesus was telling them to go and prepare for the Passover that they were going to do before His, before his uh, death and, and burial and resurrection. And in Luke 22 and 8, it says, And He sent Peter and John, saying, watch this, Go and prepare the Passover for us. It wasn't, it wasn't right then, it was in the future, that we may eat. So they said to him, uh, okay, well, where, where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, behold, you have entered, uh, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water, follow him into the house which he enters. <laughs> now, he don't know the guy nor the house that he's going into, Right? <laughs> Then you will say to the master of the house, not the guy with the pitcher, but the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Doesn't know the guy with the pitcher, doesn't know the guy that owns the house, then tells the guy that the master wants the spare bedroom so that they can do the Passover. Word of wisdom, and if you do what he says, it'll produce, right? Right? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room there make ready. So they went and they found it just as he had said to them and they prepared the Passover. It all worked out. Why? Because he gave them a word of wisdom, something that was going to happen in the future, and then they had to do it. 